Hello everyone and welcome to the latest episode of RTM's Track Talk. I'm Ailsa Cowan, your host for today, and for this episode I'm joined by Sabah Youssef, who is the CEO of Invisi Smart Technologies UK. So Sabah, to start off, would you mind introducing yourself and explaining what it is you do for the audience who may not know? Hi, Elsa. Good morning. Yes, I'm a biotechnology investor and I mainly invest in innovative technology that actually helps remediate environmental threats. So I've invested in solar technology, water treatment technology. And a few years ago, I got involved in photocatalytic coatings. So what was really important to me is that we found a way to prevent a pandemic like this that we knew was just around the corner from spreading further. So we invented this about five, six years ago, and we've actually gone through rigorous testing over the past few years um, to be able to launch this technology as soon as the world demanded it, which unfortunately uh, came around the corner this year in 2020. So business has always driven me and I'm fascinated by science. So my job is a perfect incorporation of both and really instigated my journey to becoming a woman in STEM. So can you tell us a little bit more about Invisi Smart Technologies and um, correct me if I'm wrong, but you haven't done anything in the real industry before and you're looking to get into the industry? Yes. So we have Invisi Smart Technologies. It's a British biotechnology company, and we have been developing the Invisi Smart Shield, which is our molecular nano coating for a few years now. And what it is, it's a, it's a visible coating that can be sprayed onto any surface except human skin. We firstly created this technology to actually be applied in the healthcare industry. But because of what's happened in 2020, we've realized that actually the transport industry has a huge market for our product because of the nature of their business and because of the problems that they're facing in getting back to some kind of normalcy for all of us, including uh, commuters. So, yes, we are very interested in entering the transport market purely just to help London get back to normal. So this coating that you've developed that you're hoping will be used in the rail industry where and how is this coating applied yes it's actually applied quite easily uh, which is nice it doesn't take long at all like i said you can spray it onto virtually any surface uh, hard vanishing soft vanishing pet glass plastics and so forth just not human skin and all you need is a gravity spray gun or a twin air pressure gun with a small nozzle uh, when, and a regular compressor. And all you need to do is spray the nano coating on the surface at a certain width um, from the, the surface. And it takes 15 minutes to dry. It's totally invisible. And you get one year protection after that. So you would spray it for the real industry on the likes of railings ticket machines on buttons that you press to open the door to a train yeah so what we'd like to focus on in the rail and let's say transport industry is actually yeah. the hot spots we call them hot spots so when a commuter is buying a ticket like you mentioned or opening a door and these are the hot spots that must be sprayed they're our highest priority because that is what causes cross-contamination and encourages the virus and other viruses that we might not know about yet to be spread. So I think that is definitely a priority, these hotspots where people touch their hands on the surface. It's those tactile points that are leaving us exposed. Oh, yes, we can spray the seats, we can spray the carriage of the car, but I would honestly say the first priority is the hotspot. So could you tell me a little bit more about what Invisi Smart technology actually is? Yes, absolutely. It's a molecular nano coating. So the particles are extremely small in the coating and it looks like a clear liquid, a bit like a regular disinfectant that you might mm -hmm. use uh, to clean the, the carriage car, for example. And it's non toxic. It's, it's very easily sprayed. It's extremely thin. You can't see it once it's sprayed, you can't even feel it. And it lasts for one year. It will sit on top of the surface and actually bind 
to the surface, which we have scientifically proven in the past five years of our testing that I mentioned at the beginning. So it's bound to your surface to become the new surface. So microbes, pathogens, anything that touches the surface of this sprayed coating then gets destroyed within seconds. So you, technically you have everlasting protection on the surface that you've coated and you just need to respray it once a year as opposed to every day. That's amazing. Um, my next question was going to be what what makes your technology so special? But I suppose you've maybe kind of answered it because it lasts a year. It lasts for a year, um, which is really exciting for us um, to be able to go out with that product to be able to help restart the economy quicker than uh, than planned. And the one-year efficacy, yes, it is our main USP, but also with other disinfectants, you find that they actually have quite a toxic nature that mm-hmm. you can really speak about. Uh, for example, chlorine. You know, chlorine yeah. is extremely toxic and you'd be surprised in how many disinfectants it's used and, and no one seems to talk about it. But our product is non-toxic and it doesn't rub off. So we have done quite severe durability tests on our coating where we tested it against drops of acid, ethanol, other very strong detergents, and it just doesn't shift. So that can give us the confidence to assure you and other people in the transport industry that they really are protected no matter what you spill on the ticket machine or on the, the seat of your train, you're, you're safe and you can use um, your basic disinfectants on top of this sprayed surface whenever you'd like. Um, that's no problem at all. It's sort of a double shield then for you. Yeah, it almost acts as a, a safety blanket because you know it's yeah. always going to be there. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And all you need to do is spray it uh, once a year and the spray time is so minimal. It's a bit like um, spraying an aerosol. Yeah. Uh, that you would onto your body. That's really, it. it's really that quick. Um, and you can, there's a fast turnaround time. So if you evacuate a certain train line, uh, you can have it back up and running within hours. So we are a real podcast after all. So can you tell me how this technology can benefit rail companies and its users? Yeah, definitely. I mean, if you talk about the rail companies, Obviously, we would love for them to get back to work, get back to normal, um, start helping commuters, start helping their their economies and uh, allowing commuters to also get back to work, to get to their jobs as well as the, their own jobs. And I think one year continuous protection from viruses, bacteria, fungi and volatile organic compounds is the ideal way that we can kickstart this and make this happen faster because we're in a time sensitive environment here where people are suffering industries are suffering i think the rail network needs to get back to normal as soon as possible so that they can they are our foundation they're our travel network at the end of the day we're lost without them i think it's a really effective solution in reducing the burden of cross contamination in a heavy traffic environment such as the train where you have people on and off every second the resource efficiency will also reduce because the time, the cost and the labor cost of constantly cleaning the hotspots, the ticket machines, the floors of the stations, the cars, it's a lot. So we can actually reduce the amount of their budget that they spend on cleaning and that can be better used elsewhere. Uh, I think it's also important for customers to feel confident when they're taking their kids onto the train or their parents and so forth, that it's protected. It has the Invisi Smart Shield protection that other coatings, other disinfectants just don't offer. So there is a worry that, oh, what if um, what if the, the, the car or the, the ticket machine has pathogens on it and then you use that to touch your face? You no, know, all these things go through your head and there's no way of really monitoring or knowing what is on your hand. But at least with Invisi Smart Shield, you can comfortably touch the ticket machines, open the door, press the buttons and so forth, knowing that that surface has been disinfected. Yeah, like you say, I can't remember... It was probably a good three months ago now, the last time I got on a train, yeah. purely out of maybe don't feel quite confident enough yet to actually get back onto the train because you 
but you don't know what could be there, do you? You know, also it will take time for people to get that confidence back, but we hope to speed up that process. That's the thing. It's not just for um, the rail network. It's for um, ride sharing as well. It's for the underground as well. And it's a whole journey. It's not when you're only sitting on the train. It's after you get off the train and you pull your ticket out from your pocket and you know you're going to put it through a machine and maybe keep that ticket in your pocket afterwards. You know, it's all mental. It's it's all playing on our mind constantly now because we've become so aware and we want to ease people's minds. And what better way than to do it with a, a cost-effective one-year coating that can make things happen just a bit faster. We can go back to normal a bit faster. So thinking about going back to normal, what strategies do you think need implemented to keep our railway systems operational and safe? Yeah, I mean, we hear about new strategies that are being put into place um, so that we can catch up and hopefully beat the virus. Um, but let's be honest, uh, we we predict, our team will predicts that the virus will be around for the foreseeable future and perhaps in different strains. But we know that the rail network is implementing strong strategies, as well as the government, for example, the health passport and having temperature monitors, you could have that potentially at the front of stations or when the commuters are leaving the stations. It has to be something that's realistic, affordable and sustainable. We can't have over ambitious plans put in place that we can't actually sustain for the next six months, even two years. I know that Grant Chaps, the transport secretary, is working really hard to ensure that everyone can benefit from smoother and safer journeys. I think more plans need to be put in place by the government for sure, because the memory will last. We have all become a lot more aware of how virus is spread. I've been researching virology for about eight years now. So I I did know this already, but I couldn't have that conversation with other people when I was trying to tell them because the general public that don't have an interest or a job in virology may not be aware, but now we all are. We have educated ourselves on how things happen. So I think the government would need to implement more strategies to keep our populations safe. So from your perspective, what steps are the government taking to keep people safe on the railway yeah i think what i've i've noticed is the floor markings to manage um, crowding for example i think that will be integral in helping us to stay safe because as we know viruses they can be airborne now especially what we've heard about covid-19 so i i really like and support the idea of floor markings. And I know they are constantly disinfecting the hotspots that I mentioned, such as ticket machines. Um, I think there is more to implement and the specific technology, for example, limiting the number of people per carriage, having spaces between the seats uh, is a very smart idea. So how do you see going forward the industry working in a post-COVID-19 world? Yeah, to be honest with you, I think the rail industry, it will be slower, but that doesn't have to mean it will be less efficient. I know it may seem daunting and they may have teething problems, but I think what will happen is that things will have to be a lot more organized. Journey might take a little bit longer for us, the commuters. And I think everyone has to just take a bit more care in the whole process of driving a train or making a journey or operating a ticket machine. But like I said, I think it's all very doable. If we implement the right strategies today, I think everything is achievable. It just, life might not be as fast in the rail industry. So with regards to the technology that you've developed that is available for the rail industry to use, what stage are you at with the technology? Yeah, well, we're... we're, at full commercialization so we have all of our certifications our Mm -hmm. scientific tests our due diligence we started spraying other buildings for example hotels um, clients in the hospitality industry and clients in the government in fact and healthcare naturally that was our first reason for even creating the 
the shield, the Invisi Smart Shield. Um, so we're at, we're fully ready to go. Uh, we are very keen to explore our opportunities with the rail network because of all the benefits I mentioned that can come in a very quick time and a very cost effective price to help millions of people in the UK. Yeah, I can imagine with the inevitable financial crisis that is probably going to follow, yeah. Yeah. a cost effective solution is definitely what a lot of people will be looking for. Yeah, you know, we have to be mindful. Um, there are people that have, yes, been furloughed, that have lost their jobs that actually don't have job stability. And if we look on a corporate level, there are companies who whose budgets have just diminished and they're under pressure to keep their business safe and people that are using their business safe, i.e. the commuters. So it's a catch-22 here because businesses want to get back to normal, such as the rail network. But budgets have been diminished because the economy is down and it might reduce further. And so we need to find ways where we can actually help the rail network. We can work with their budgets, not against them, to get everything back to normal. Well, thank you very much for that, Sabah. It's it's great to hear about a company that isn't letting this outbreak stop them from doing what they do. (laughs) I hope so. (laughs) <laughs> well thank you very much for joining us and everyone who's listened I hope you've enjoyed hearing as much as I have about how companies are innovating around the virus and hopefully keeping the rail industry moving thank you so much Elsa thank you